Hello and welcome to part three of chapter five. And in this third and final part, we will look at language development as well as early childhood education. Uh, so these are the topics in the language development section, understanding phonology and morphology, changes in syntax and semantics, advances in pragmatics, and young children's literacy. So let's begin with what is phonology and morphology? Well, first of all, phonology refers to the sound system of a language. It includes the sounds used and how they may be combined. So when we speak of phonemes, they are the smallest units of sound of the, of the sounds that make up a language. So the sound of t, you know, from a t, t is, a, is a phoneme. The a sound from an a is a phoneme. The d sound of a d is a phoneme. Okay, right, so phonology is all about combining sounds to make up to make up uh, words within a language. Um, morphology, on the other hand, is is the study of morphemes. Um, morphology is about how units of meaning are combined to produce words. It, a, morpheme, a morpheme is the smallest unit of meaning. So morphemes can be root words, such as the word cat. The word cat is a, is a morpheme. It cannot be broken down into smaller units. Um, you have individual letters don't have meaning you know, uh, uh, on their own. So cat is a morpheme. If I have the word cats, I have two morphemes, cat and the S that follows. The S has, is a unit of meaning. It means more than one cat. Similarly, if I had a word such as unfriendly, that would be a combination of three morphemes. The root word friend. And if I add ly to the end of it, it becomes friendly. It changes the meaning somewhat. And so the ly is a morpheme. If I make it unfriendly, that once again changes the meaning. So the un carries meaning. So morphemes are, are, are either root words or they're prefixes or suffixes that you add to root words. Um, okay, so now that I've kind of explained what those things are, uh, during the preschool years, as it says here, uh, children do become sensitive to the sounds of spoken words. Uh, they start understanding, you know, what sounds make up words. Uh, they can produce all the sounds of their language, all the phonemes that are used. And they, preschoolers do demonstrate a knowledge of morph morphological rules. The preschoolers can use plurals, possessives, prepositions, articles, and verb forms. Uh, they study this in, in studies such as this one here. Uh, this is Berkeley's study of, of morphological rules in young children. And what they do is, is in, in many of these language studies, when they're studying whether or not children know certain rules, is they use made up words so that children don't have differing experiences with the words. They start with a brand new word that the children have never heard. So, you know, in this case, they show the children the top diagram, this is a wug. And, and we're assuming as experimenters that they've never heard the word wug before because it's not a real word. And then you, you have that bottom picture. Now there are, now there's another one. There are two of them. There are two. What? And, and if children respond with wugs, it shows that they're saying a new word that they've probably never re ever heard before. No one's ever said wugs. And, um, and they've added the S on their own to produce this new word. So it shows that they're not just repeating things that they've heard. They're, as, as behaviorism uh, as claimed in the past, so that children, you know, learn by by observational learning, they, they copy others' language, and then they get reinforced, rewarded, or punished for, for language use, and, 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 and their language, you know, gets 
shaped over time to become more and more correct. Anyways, something like this doesn't fit that 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 explanation for language that that we're copying others and then we're getting reinforced or punished depending on whether we use language correctly. I mean, because you know, this child is not copying anyone when they come up with the word rugs and they produce it themselves. They are producing a word that they've never heard before, and it shows that they are applying rules of the language. Anyway, so this is this is a study testing if the child knows morphological rules. Do they know how to add an s when there's multiple rugs? <laughs> Uh, so that's just an example of a, of a type of language experiment they do to test whether children know certain rules. Uh, children engage in a process called fast mapping. Fast mapping just refers to the rapid learning of new vocabulary words. Preschoolers learn words very quickly, uh, new words very quickly. Um, and the preschool children, um, uh, also learn and, and apply the rules of syntax. I mean, we just actually saw an example with, with um, well, we saw an example of a morphological rule with the bugs, but they also, they, they, they know how to combine sent, uh, words in the correct order. So, you know, to make, to make correct phrases and, sent, and sentences, you need to combine words in, in an acceptable order, an acceptable full form. So a child doesn't, preschooler, preschool child would not say Billy hit Sal, Sally if he really meant that Sally's hitting Billy. I mean, he knows that, that the, he knows which word has to come before the hit, which one comes after. If you say Billy hit Sally, it means Billy's doing the hitting. And, and, and so preschool children, I mean, they've got all the, all the basics of language. They, they, um, can produce all the phonemes. They they know the morphological rules, adding s's and eds and ing's. They know syntax. They can combine words into proper sentences. And then um, they also, as I as I started to say, they they also learn new words very quickly and, and increase their vocabulary. This is semantics. So syntax has to do with word order. Semantics has to do with the meaning of words and and building up a, a a vocabulary of, of words that you understand. Um, these are principles of that apply to the children burning, uh, not burning, but building their vocabularies. They 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 learn the words they hear the most often, things that interest them, in, in mean you know con, uh, meaningful, colorful contexts. I mean, anyway, so uh, so there's this. Some principles that apply to which learn, words are the most likely to learn. Anyways, I, I, I don't, I'm not that, in, you know, really interested that you learn these particular points here. You can read about them, but I did want to mention that the, the, their vocabulary, their vocabulary development during preschool years is very dramatic. Uh, some experts studying children's word learning, learning is, uh, concluded that preschoolers learn an average of one word per waking hour between a year and a half and six years of age. So between the, the time they're 18 months, a year and a half, and six years of age, they're learning on average one word for every hour that they're awake, one brand new word, which is, which is very rapid word learning. You know, that they're, that they're getting a new word every single day, you know, every hour. I mean, Obviously, they're not getting one every hour. They they get more in some in some hours and in other hours they may not learn any. But but on an average one per hour, I mean that's an incredible pace. And this leads them to to know approximately fourteen thousand words by the time they get into first grade, um, because they are doing this fast mapping principle of just learning words quickly. Um. One other aspect of speech is called pragmatics. This is the knowledge of how to adjust your speech in different settings and different contexts. For instance, depending on who you're speaking to. Around the age of four or five, children learn to, to change their speech to suit the situation. So a four or five year old will talk differently to a two year old versus someone their own age versus when they talk to an adult. They would be more polite and more formal. So 
they you can they've shown the studies that they adjust their speaking. They use smaller words when they talk to somebody younger. They use more slang talking to their peers, even at even at the age of four and five, and and they they're more formal and polite when they talk to adults. This is pragmatics, changing your speech to your speech to, to suit the situation you're in. Um, um, I I'm not going to spend much time here, but um, but obviously, uh, young children's literacy development is a very important topic. Make sure you read more about it in the book. Uh, books are obviously very valuable tools to to teach literacy to children and. And there is, we are going, I, I will come across some studies in, in, in other chapters as well, that we're, we're, it really stresses that, that the more that we read to children and the more books that the children eventually read on their own, I mean, it obviously has great impact on their levels of literacy. Um, I, I'm not going to get into, like, like you're saying, I'm not going to get into a lot of specifics here, but, but the evidence has piled up about the importance of reading to your children. And I'm sure you've heard that before. Okay, our final topic is early childhood education. And we will just look at a couple of topics in this section. The first is, you know, a couple of different education approaches. One is called child-centered kindergarten. Um, and this is education of the whole child and concern for their physical, cognitive, and social emotional development. So it's not just about teaching them facts and, and all, you know, their ABCs and their numbers and things like that. It, it's about, you know, kind of looking at the child as a whole and, and, and taking into account their, their social skills and their friendships and uh, their physical development and, and, and giving young children recess and gym class and things like that. I mean, uh, so, so this is is a child centered approach, and it's it's not about what we want them to know, but it's it's taking into account what is best for the child at, at this particular age. Uh, the Montessori approach it's become more and more popular in the United States. In a Montessori school system, a child is given great freedoms; so they can choose which activities interest them. So the teachers in a Montessori school do not, you know, teach the class as a whole on whatever topic of the day that they've chosen to, to teach about. Instead, the teachers act as facilitators. They, they guide the learning of the children as the children choose what they want to learn and which activities they want to pursue. Uh, the teachers will show the child how to perform certain intellectual activities you know how to learn and whatnot, but the teacher is not selecting the learning material for each child. The children select these uh, these topics on their own. So one child during the day may be interested in dinosaurs and spend all day learning about dinosaurs and reading dinosaur books and and learning about different types of dinosaurs. Another child may be learning about the solar system the same during the same day. Another child's just reading quietly on their own. Another one builds builds castles with blocks. I mean, they were all different learning activities and, and the idea is to follow the interests of the child so that they they're excited about learning. They and, and then once again the teachers just facilitate the process and just guide them and 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 kind of teach the children how to learn as they pursue their interests. Um, okay. Our final slide in chapter five and in, in, in unit two is is looking at um, uh, first of all education for for the disadvantaged uh, preschoolers in it in the United States and we do have a lot of them and um, one great program that's been going for a long time now is this Project Head Start. Uh, it's a comp compensatory program designed to provide and you know, good quality preschool education to children from low-income families. Um, it's the largest federally funded program for U.S. children. Um, it's been running for almost 50, 50 years now. And, you know, almost 1 million children are enrolled in Project Head Start on an annual basis. Um, 
it provides these uh, disadvantaged children with an opportunity to acquire the skills and experiences that are important for success in school. It gets them ready for formal schooling. Um, okay, and and I, yeah, I think it's it's a wonderful program, and and the research has shown that the children certainly do benefit from being in in a cognitively enriched preschool program, because our evidence has shown that that children from disadvantaged background tend to start off schooling behind other children, and they never catch up. So this gives them uh, an opportunity to begin on an equal footing. Uh, two controversies that I'll just mention in early childhood education. One is the curriculum controversy, and that's basically the controversy of, you know, should teachers use a more child-centered, constructivist approach, you know, kind of like I was talking about with the child-centered kindergarten, and, and you, you know, certainly the Montessori approach is, is very much a child-centered approach, or should teachers do more of a direct instruction approach? Where they where that really concentrates on on teaching as much information as possible and and you know it gives less freedom to the children and it's more about teaching them what they have to learn and uh, this con uh, within this controversy I mean there are people that believe in both approaches more child centered versus versus more direct instruction and and uh, the best teachers, it turns out, tend to use a combination of both styles. They do some direct instruction, telling the children what they need to know, but they also have children discover knowledge on their own by doing constructive activities. The second, the second uh, controversy is, is interesting. It's the idea of a, perhaps having a universal preschool education. Um, should it be instituted for all? four-year-olds in the United States. I just finished telling you a little while ago that Project Head Start is a, is a preschool program that shows great benefits. Uh, and it's, it's, it's available for, for uh, disadvantaged children. And so the, the idea came up, well, perhaps all children should be enrolled in a preschool program. We'll kind of push the start of school back to, to the age of four, you know, that, that well, formal schooling will start with preschool and then move on to kindergarten and and, and elementary school. And um, the the issue here is though that even though it is it has been shown to be um, very helpful in 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 a, uh, to to those disadvantaged children that in, are enrolled in Project Head Start, um, many parents that that are of more of a middle socioeconomic status or a higher socioeconomic status feel that perhaps uh, it's better that, that the parents are educating the children at that age. That, that, you know, especially parents that can afford to stay home with the children, uh, perhaps the child would do better. It's actually learning more and doing better by remaining in the home environment at the age of four. Um, the evidence seems to suggest that preschool education of four-year-olds is, is much more important for disadvantaged children. They're not getting, they don't have as enriched home environments. They tend to have parents that are working more hours and, and, um, and so they, they're not getting the same quality education in the home environment. So, so with this controversy, it, it's those that are more disadvantaged, it would be useful for them to have a preschool education for all. For those that that ha do stay at home with the children, it was it would kind of actually take away from some of what they can teach them at the age of four. Okay, and that ends chapter five. Um, and good luck on the test, everyone, this week. I will post the videos for the unit three chapters uh, certainly sometime this weekend before Monday.